Aerodynamics of Flight from the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, Chapter 5. There are four forces that act on an aircraft. Thrust, lift, drag, and weight. In a straight, level, and unaccelerated flight, thrust equals drag and lift equals weight. This is based on Newton's third law, which says that for every action or force, there is an equal but opposite reaction or force. Therefore, the net force equals zero. For an aircraft to start moving, thrust must be exerted and be greater than drag. It will accelerate until drag plus thrust equals zero, which is when the airspeed is constant. If the drag is greater than the thrust, then the aircraft will decelerate. As we mentioned before, the angle between the cord of an airfoil and its relative wind is known as angle of attack. Straight and level flight may be sustained at a wide range of speeds by changing the angle of attack. When the airspeed is low, the angle of attack must be relatively high if the balance between lift and weight is to be maintained. But this angle of attack cannot be increased indefinitely. Let's take a look at this graph. We can see that if an increase of angle of attack, we also get an increase of lift. This can be seen in the line labeled CL or coefficient of lift, which is a red line. There is an angle where the coefficient of lift doesn't continue to increase. In fact, it says we will experience a stall. The maximum coefficient of lift or CL max occurs at a certain angle, which we call critical angle of attack. Any increase of angle at, of attack beyond this critical angle of attack will result in a stall. Now, look at the orange line. Or coefficient of drag. The higher the angle of attack is, the more drag we get. This is because the aircraft is creating more resistance. Think of when you are riding your motorcycle. If you lean forward, the angle of attack between your shoulders and the direction of travel is small. But if you try to sit up straight, your body will feel the resistance against the wind because you're adding drag by increasing your angle of attack. Now, if we divide the coefficient of lift by the coefficient of drag, we can determine the lift-drag ratio, which is the green line. In this particular aircraft, around 6 degrees we obtain the maximum lift-drag ratio. What does that mean to us? That an angle of attack around 6 degrees will give us the most amount of lift for the least amount of drag. Let's take a look at the other graph. <clears throat> we can see that an increase of airspeed, the parasite drag or green line increases but the induced drag or red line decreases. There is a point where the induced drag and the parasite drag are at a minimum. And this is the same point where the maximum lift drag ratio occurs. The blue dotted line is the total drag. And at that certain speed where the total drag is at minimum is the same speed of the LD max. But what does that mean to us? That if we were to lose our engine, maintaining that airspeed will give us the least resistance or drag, thus letting us glide further. This is known as the best glide speed and can be found in your POH. Let's talk about these two types of drag separate. Drag is simply the resistance to the aircraft movement. 
parasite drag means it's not associated with the production of lift. And there are three types. The form drag is caused by the aircraft shape and airflow around it, like the cowling, antennas, etc. Interference drag comes to the intersection of airstreams, for example, at the wind route. Skin friction drag is the aerodynamic resistance due to the contact of moving air with the surface of the aircraft. The induced drag is a byproduct of the production of lift, and the faster the airspeed is, the lesser the induced drag is. We can see this drag at the tip of the wing in the form of a tip vortex. When the aircraft is viewed from the tail, these vortices circulate counterclockwise about the right tip and clockwise are about the left tip. As the air and vortices roll off to the back of your wing, they angle down, which is known as a downwash. If you are close to the ground, these vortices are disrupted by the ground itself, but not so much when we are up in the air. We will discuss the formation of these wind tip vortices in the next video. Have fun!